In this video, we'll talk about the array list collection. If you haven't done so already, I'd strongly encourage you to take a look at video 2030, Intro to Collections, for a lot of the introductory material on this topic. So to begin, I've got a simple Visual Basic console application created called ArrayListVB. And in the submain, I'm just going to paste in some code I've created, and we'll talk about it in just a moment. Um, I'm also going to need to paste a little bit more code. So we'll put some down here uh, underneath the end sub. So I basically have created my car object like I had from the previous video. And here we're going to use that car object. Now, before we talked about in the uh, introductory lessons about things that make the different collections different. and one of the things about the array list that was much different than the uh, the array was that it allows a little bit more flexibility in terms of uh, its ability to expand in size dynamically as needed and then also we talked about it being a little more flexible in terms of the what types of objects that can be placed into it uh, we can put multiple objects that are of different types even into the exact same array list so the other thing that I want to note is that's highlighted in this section is that we're not going to take a look at everything that was in the array list that was already in the array and those are things like clear, reverse, index of, last index of, count, clone, and get type because we've already talked about these things and they really don't they're really not that much different in um, the array list so without further ado let's move on in and take a look what we've done is created three car objects uh, a Dodge Viper, Jaguar XJ8, and the Mercedes, the new SL55. And we're going to add each of those items to our array list. So up to this point, there's really nothing new. We've just created a new instance of an array list, and we've uh, created its initial size equal to 5. Now, I referenced this at the very top of the code example about the elasticity of the uh, array list and although we have five we can we could have set this to 500 in anticipation of a lot of car objects and then once we have all the car objects we need we can trim it down and reallocate its size and its memory usage back to the CLR so we're not using more than we should we're good citizens within uh, within the sandbox and we're given a couple of tools to use in order to manage the size and that we're currently using and those are things like capacity and trim to size so in this case what I've done is uh, displayed the initial capacity then use the trim to size method and what this will do is get rid of any unused array list elements so that uh, if we did for example have 500 here and we allocated all this memory to 500 items but never use them it would reallocate all that memory back into uh, to the memory manager and then we print out the capacity once again. So let's go ahead and save this and build this. And I'm going to bring up my command window and run uh, array list VB, the name of my project. And when I do, notice that the number of objects that the array list can hold is five. And then after we've used the trim, um, we uh, see that there's only three objects in the array list. The next part of code that I'm going to paste in here, we're going to show two different things. First of all, how to display a single item. It's done much in the same way as we did the array. I just use a different uh, notation here where I use item and then sub one uh, model. So I'm going to display the second car. The second one is one because we go zero, one, two. And I print out the make, the model, and the year. So that's how we display a single item within our array list and the section second section of code uh, checks for the existence of a specific car within our collection here we display the count of cars and then I'm going to use the contains method and pass in a specific instance of the car object that we created way up here dim car 3 as the new Mercedes right and we're going to determine whether or not it exists by saving it into this B exists. So then we'll write out the car was found in the array, true or false. 
Let's go ahead and save this and build a solution and then run it again. Notice this time that we have some new information here. The second car is a Jaguar XJ8 that the number of cars is three and then were we able to find our car three? Yes. Yes we were. I think I may have misspoke a little bit earlier. Sorry for the confusion. I looked at number two as the second car, but the second car was actually one, and that's why we found the Jaguar there. So let's go ahead and minimize that and continue on. What we'll do this time is we'll paste some code in here to remove an object from the collection. This time we'll remove car three and then we'll use the contains to find out if it exists. Then we'll print out the number of cars again and we'll print out whether we were able to find it. So this really exercises the remove method. So let's go ahead and build solution and then run it again. And we want to pay a special attention to this, the number of cars after car 3 is removed too. The car was found in the array? False. So it wasn't able to find it this time because we deleted it. So now what we're going to do is use two more methods and two properties. We're going to use the fix size and the read only methods to return a wrapper object and that wrapper object will contain a copy of our array list but it'll be a specific copy that will in this case not allow any new ones to be added new elements new cars to be added to our collection and this will uh, uh, version will return a, a version of our array list that is read only we can't add and we can't um, write to or change any of the values of those objects so notice what happens we use a static version of the array list and we call the fix size method and we pass in an instance of our array list and that returns back an array list that we're going to create called fix cars so then we're going to check is fix cars fix size and the answer should be true in which case it'll write out the line fix cars is fixed in size and the same is true for the read only here we use the static uh, version of the array list use the read-only property which creates a wrapper around our cars array list returns it back to um, an identifier called read-only cars we check the property is read-only on our read-only cars object in which case it should print out this to the window so let's go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and build solution pull this open again and notice that indeed the fixed cars is fixed in size and the read only cars is read only. So this is helpful if you wanted to expose a copy of your array uh, through a property within your class and you just want to give somebody access to the values inside of the array without allowing them to change it or add anything else to it so it gives um, you some control over how people who how you expose your array list to the world and what other methods and classes within your application or or uh, calling applications are able to to do with it the next thing I'm going to show you is how to use the toArray method of your array list, which allows you to take an, uh, an array list and convert it to an array. Essentially, it's creating a copy of the uh, array list, uh, much in the same way as we just did a moment ago. Except instead of creating a wrapper, you're actually creating a brand new object. So the changes you make to, in this case, a new uh, array called autos will not be propagated to your cars collection. 
So in this case, we're creating a new autos, and we're sizing it initially to the size of our cars collection. Now, notice that I can't make the array strongly typed. I have to make it as object. Unfortunately, the to array only returns back an object type. So cars dot to array, and we're setting that to the identifier autos and then we're just going to loop through each of the cars just to show you that autos indeed does have all of the items that uh, cars did. Now let me say this, I'm not sure why you would ever need to do this. I mean array and um, uh, array list are, are so similar that I'm not sure what the benefit here is but you're definitely given the opportunity to to copy those objects into a um, into a much more stringent type of uh, of collection if you choose to. So let's go ahead and save this, build it, and run it again. And notice at the very bottom that we have car in the array is Dodge and Jaguar. Of course we deleted one of our our Mercedes in a previous example so there's only two in there. Now the last thing that I want to demonstrate is how to add two different types into the same array list. And so what I'm going to do is add another class. We had car and I'm going to add truck. And the only thing that's really different is that truck has a new field called towing capacity and therefore has something uh, called x towing capacity as an input parameter to the constructor. Let's go ahead and save that. Then what I want to do is add some more code. Just paste some in here that I'm copying from a text file. And what this will do is allow us to exercise this. And as the note says, array lists provide more flexibility, allowing different types to be added to the same structure. The caveat to that is yes, you can do this with an array, but you have to type the array as an object. So here's what we've done. We create a new array list and we start adding in some of our, for example, our car one that we created very early in our example all the way at the top here, car one, which is a Dodge Viper. So let's scroll back down. Then I'm going to add to that exact same array list a truck, a new truck that's a Ford F10 pickup, uh, 2002 and the towing capacity of 15, I guess that would be tons not really a truck guy so I don't know these things uh, but at any rate what we've done is create a generic object called vehicle and dimension that as an object so that when we loop through each of the items within our AR list we can reference the O vehicle. What I do inside here is up to me however for the purpose of this example I've created O vehicle dot get type dot name so I'm going to find out what type it is and based on the type I'm going to print out either car or truck. So let's go ahead and save this, build it, and then let's run it. Now notice at the very end how we have car and truck showing us that our example did work correctly. So that's pretty neat. The array list allows us to add different types and that we are free then to evaluate each of those types as we wish, um, each of the objects in that array list as we wish based on their type. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and you learned a little bit more about array lists and their benefit over arrays. Thank you.